Wow, what a historical week this was, right? It still feels surreal to see Apple finally join the XR space because we have been waiting for this moment for such a long time. And now it's here and it feels amazing. I am so excited. Partly this will change the course of where we are heading in terms of hardware and software, but also just gave the medium the best reputation boost it so desperately needed. Just saying, but Apple did not even mention VR, MR or metaphors once. So in this video I'm going to share my thoughts on Apple's new headset and I can tell you it's going to be spicy as always. I hope you are ready for it. I'll tell you where I think it's going to take us in the near future and how big the chances are it will actually succeed. But before we get into that, let's get down to the basics first. The Apple Vision Pro, that's the name of this standalone headset, does mixed reality, meaning it can blend the real world with the virtual one. The idea is to have your phone, tablet, TV, laptop and computer built into a single wearable device that displays everything in front of you in the shape of a three-dimensional user interface that lets you believe it's physically real. Its design is retro, but futuristic at the same time with a familiar but also fresh take and materials we have never seen but also have seen in other Apple products. And as I said on Twitter, it almost feels like they went full Ready Player One. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the design. Would you wear this? Would you even consider buying it if you had the money? I mean, I'm very curious to hear what you think. By the way, something I noticed that doesn't necessarily surprise me at all is that consumers, but also media outlets and enterprises think these are actual AR glasses. But in reality, this is a virtual reality headset with yes, AR capabilities. The simplest way to explain this is that you are looking through a VR viewer serving as a pass-through to see the real world mixed with virtual elements. And what does make the Apple Vision Pro stand out from the other headsets that we have seen so far is that it uses so-called eyesight. It's pretty much a 3D screen on the outside of the headset that displays your eyes to the people around you or can switch to this wave of colors when you are doing something in VR privately. It's basically reverse pass-through and will make social interactions with someone on the outside a lot more acceptable. Apple's so-called spatial computer features crazy, crazy specs. It, it has micro OLED displays sharing 23 million pixels, stating this is like 4K per eye, but we have yet to see what the specifics are going to be in terms of resolution. They are being overlaid with uh, three element lenses that are surrounded by eye trackers and cameras and the Vision Pro is being powered by a dual chip design existing out of Apple's very own M2 seen in MacBooks and a brand new R1 chip that has been specifically made for the headset. It powers a whopping 12 cameras five sensors, six microphones and inbuilt audio solutions with the highlight being its LiDAR scanner, depth camera and eye tracking in combination with foveated rendering. What's absolutely nuts is that these cameras on the outside can be used to scan your own face, turn it into a model and utilize it for FaceTime so that not only you can see the people you talk to but they can also see you. I so much want to see developers do more with this because the possibilities are probably going to be endless. It's good to know that Apple is the only one of all the other hardware manufacturers in the XR space to make their own chips. Companies like Meta and Pico all depend on what Qualcomm produces, which gives Apple a uncommon position in the XR market. And of course you still have ASML who rules the entire universe, but that's a whole different story. All of this will run on a platform called Vision OS and you can use it to browse the internet, FaceTime, watch movies, uh, take 3D spatial photos and videos, which still feels very dystopian to me, and last but not least, lets you be more productive. To navigate, you control things with your hands, voice and eyes, and on top of that, Bluetooth devices such as a PlayStation 5 controller and more of Apple's own products, like their Magic Keyboard, AirPods, Pods and MacBook seem to be supported too, with the last letting you display your laptop's monitor wherever you want. So yes, casual gaming on a virtual screen or for example play Rec Room with just hand tracking will be a thing on this device, but more hardcore gaming like you can do on Meta's Quest with full motion controls is something Apple is skipping for now. 
Hand tracking is super easy to use, right, as it feels natural. And of course, you are going to miss the haptic feedback, but does allow for the mainstream to pick up this device without too much of a learning curve. It's clear that they are mainly focusing on AR, going for familiar use cases, which I think makes total sense, because instead of trying to replace the things or abruptly reinventing the wheel that people aren't really ready for yet, they're just gonna bring the screens you already use in real life to the vision. The collaboration between Apple and Disney proves even more that this is a headset for daily use. For the moment you want to sit back and relax and watch a Star Wars movie or to dive into your favorite sports game. And for now this is a concept of course of what it could look like but I do believe it will change the way we experience entertainment as we know it. That said, there is VR too, but Apple calls this immersive environments. The digital crown serves as a gateway between mixed realities, letting you choose whether you want to be in your real space, somewhere in the middle, or fully immersed in volumetric shot places. Comfort-wise, Apple lets you choose your own size and color headband, face cover, and if needed, offers prescription lenses too. And what I find interesting is that this headband has been made for all hairstyles, which is a big step into the right direction. Additionally, it comes with an overhead strap uh, as well, which I do think will be a lifesaver for long play sessions, because with great technology comes a certain weight, and I do have a strong feeling that this headset will be fairly heavy. It's good to see Apple did decide to go for an external battery that you can slide into your pocket and use for approximately two hours with fingers crossed options to attach other packs too. Plus it can be plugged into a constant power source but does mean you are having to deal with a wire dangling behind you. Apple also introduced Optic ID, a system that is meant to protect the privacy of your eyeballs and everything else you're looking at. As far as this goes, I'm happy to see Apple being fully transparent and taking this new technology very seriously. The Apple Vision will be launching in 2024 and will cost you $3,499. <laughs> I know, the price tag is insane, especially since we are in a recession right now and most of us have other priorities. It's good to realize that Apple built a headset people want to use, not a headset people can afford. During the reveal, Apple didn't try to sell a headset to consumers, but a future lifestyle instead. For now, the Vision Pro is a tool for developers to build us this future of spatial computing and the lucky few rich early adopters that want to be on the forefront of experiencing it first. And Apple has already said that they will give demos of this device in stores. So it's nice to know that you can at least try it even if you don't have the money. This is Apple's blueprint we're talking about. Their vision of where they think virtual and augmented reality could be heading and how they want us to use it. Personally, it feels like we went to the next level. For years, hardware manufacturers, software developers and VR enthusiasts like you and me have tried to work towards the tipping point of the medium going mainstream. And thanks to these efforts, Apple is about to kick it all off. I expect more big tech giants to follow in the upcoming years or so because competition will drive innovation. A rising tide that lifts all boats, you know? We already see the interest for the Vision Pro trickle down to other headsets like the Pico 4, Quest 3, and even the Pro that I recently did a review on. It actually comes the closest to what the Vision Pro is going to become. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, then go to the link in the description below or click on the info card above. But yes, overall, this is amazing news for the entire XR industry. We will see so many new people join the space, creating beautiful things, and the expectations are, of course, through the roof. Apple put them so high that I can almost not believe that everything they showed is possible or even is going to look as good as they, well, portrayed it to be. But we'll see, time will tell. I still have so many questions. What is its field of view going to be like? How good is the resolution? What's the refresh rate? Will the strap be comfy enough for long, long play sessions? Can it do full body tracking? And how does the IPD calibration even work? But we'll have to wait a little longer to find out. So will I be getting one myself? Well, I will definitely try my best to get my hands on one for the channel to of course uh, tell you how next level this headset truly is. So stay tuned. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Vision Pro. Do you think it's gonna succeed or do you think it's gonna, well, flop? 
be my guest, okay? I think it's a giant leap forward and I can't wait to see where it's going to take us. So until next time, bye bye for now and let's keep an eye on this new headset. Oh yes. You know, the, the, the fundamental problem here is that headphones are a miraculous thing. You put a pair of headphones and you get the same experience you get with a great pair of speakers, right? There's no such thing as headphones for video, right? There's, no, there's not something I can carry with me that I can put on and it gives me the same experience I get when I'm watching my, you know, 50 inch plasma display at home. And, in, you know, until somebody invents that, you're going to have these opposing constraints. Well, they have those huge goggles you can wear. Oh, they're, but they're lousy. But, right? but you never get a date if right. you ever wear them, right? <laughs>